Good day. I've just been sorting out these lettuce seeds and as you can see there's um, quite a few in there. I need to remember which variety this is. I'm doing this in the garden and so you can hear there's quite a lot of banging with the work going on next door. But there's another job that I'm going to be doing with seeds which I'll do inside. This is our dried bean harvest. Admittedly, we haven't taken out the runners yet, but to have one plate like this dinner plate of, of dried beans for keeping over winter is pretty abysmal. The maroon ones are Madeira maroon, the white ones are Golden Gate, and you'll see quite a lot that are sort of a pale brown or a darker brown. Those are basically immature Madeira maroon and they just won't have the level of protein that they should have. In fact, many of these Madeira Maroon don't have the gloss on them that they gain when they get fully mature. So, yeah, in terms of a bean harvest, it's pretty low this year. Hey-ho! As if by magic, I'm now at the plot. I hadn't expected to come down today simply because I was going to have a day at home working at my desk because I've had a runny nose over the last few days since like Saturday, but particularly Saturday evening and then through to Sunday evening. I needed to have a roll of loo paper, you know, next to me because I really was, my nose was running. Let's just say that. And sneezing a bit and obviously I've I've picked up a little virus somewhere and then this morning I thought I better just take it easy I'll do the seed saving bit because I had taken some seeds home yesterday so I did that so I did the lettuce I still haven't found out what um, what seed it is but I think it was the lettuce here wasn't it um, mm, it'll come to me and then the beans as well, which, as I say, are pretty... Mm. Um, I will not be saving seeds from those beans because they haven't grown well enough this year for me to save seeds. Thankfully, I've got seeds that I've saved from previous years of both varieties, so I have plenty. I like when I save seeds to make sure I have plenty for a good couple of years to come. And because I keep all of our seeds in an airtight container in the fridge, they last a long time. I mean, really do last a long time. I'm hoping that the carrots and the, the parsnips will last maybe three, four years as opposed to just maybe a year, two years. So, yeah, I wasn't going to come down. And then I was in the garden and I needed to... to I was just looking at a pot and then I thought, gosh, that's quite dry. And then I thought, actually, you know what? I better go down because I've got trays that um, need to be watered. I've got seedlings that need to be watered. No, the trays don't need to be watered. The seedlings do. So I've come down and as you see, I've watered various things. So I'm quite pleased to have done that. And clearly there was also another reason to come down because I came into the shed and one of my my plot neighbours here, they bought an awful lot of flour a few weeks ago. And they said to me, do you want any flour? Thank you very much for my flour. So, yeah, best that must have arrived this morning. So best to take it home today. Don't want anything coming into the shed. Otherwise, there might be a flour fight in the shed, which we really don't want. But, yeah, I... I'm just pleased to have got out and had some fresh air actually and I'm feeling so much better today than I did yesterday. I did think that that runny nose and the the cough that I had and I've done a Covid test, I'm negative, um, was going to last but 
it's one of those things that sort of went within maybe 36, 48 hours. So yeah, I'm pretty pleased about that. So I thought I'd pop down here and do some watering and watering I have done. And I'm just so surprised that so much needs watering. It is mainly the seedlings where we don't have a tray underneath them or we've got a tray with holes underneath them. Um, but yeah, I'm glad I did that because I did need to do that. We'll come on to something I said last week about sewing into modules um, because I'm not quite convinced it's working for us with certain things. Certainly with beetroot and with turnips it is, but I'm not quite sure about other things. Anyway, look, I'm going to go now. We do actually have a allotment committee meeting this evening so I'm very pleased not to have a runny nose for that because if I had had a runny nose we would be cancelling it um, or postponing it rather but yeah with no runny nose I will be chairing the committee meeting this evening so that we can plan the upcoming months because there's quite a few things that we want to get done over the winter months here just like we got done a huge amount over the winter months last year Right, I will see you I will see you again very soon. Bye. Good day and welcome to a very sunny Wednesday afternoon. It feels rather lovely. Blue skies, white clouds. <laughs> um yeah, it's um it's rather a lovely afternoon down here. It was a bit grey this morning with spots of sun, which was great. But now it's really rather lovely. And I hope Vivi has it as well, because I was speaking to her this morning. And when we were having sunshine, she was having a lot of grey cloud. So I hope it has got sunnier in um, South East London. I have been thinking a lot about the modular sown seeds that we've done this year. And as I mentioned last week, or was it earlier this week? I'm not sure. Turnips and beetroot do really well for us. We modular sow them in clusters. We allow three to four to germinate or grow on and then that whole module gets planted out. And our beetroot here is doing really fabulously and I hope this week we're going to be putting the turnips out as well. I've decided which bed they're going to go into so I can get on and do that later this week. I've been thinking a bit more though about the Portuguese cabbage and the lettuce that we sowed because I've been feeling that both have been rather slow in growing. Now it could of course be the time of year. We've had quite a few, oh, there's a cormorant. Um, that's very high up cormorant as well. You know, they're, they're water birds really. Um, yes, Portuguese cabbage and the lettuce seedlings, they seem to be growing quite slowly and particularly I think the Portuguese cabbage because I had been anticipating those now to be maybe about six to eight inches high and with a good amount of leaf on and ready to plant out. And I've been looking at them over the last couple of weeks thinking maybe they like being crowded when they're sown because how I usually sow Portuguese cabbage and any brassicas in fact and lettuce is in a seed tray. I usually split the seed tray as you've seen me do before, sow various different varieties of brassica, Portuguese cabbage, dazzling blue kale, Nero di Toscana let's say and different types of lettuce in different trays and then they have germinated they have grown on to seedlings usually about two to three inches tall particularly the brassicas and it's at that point that I have pricked them out and potted them on into their own individual containers 
And lately it's been the container wise modules that I've been um, potting them up into and then they've grown on quite well and then we've taken them out and put them directly into the ground. As Vivi was mentioning in her video the other day, which I'll link to here, the container wise modules, the larger, well, both or all sizes, but the ones that we use for brassicas, which are a bit larger, they, oh, it's Catty. Hello, lovely Catty. Oh, it's lovely Bengal. <laughs> Distraction day. Yeah, the, the ones that we use for brassicas, they, like the smaller ones, they stop the root going round and round and becoming root bound. It's the, it's the shape of them and the way that they, are, they have been made. And they were originally, I think, designed or used by Charles Dowding, the container wise ones. And now Charles Dowding has his own um, branded variety, I think, which he has designed himself. But we've got the old container wise ones and really do find that pricking things out and putting them into those modules <clears throat> stops things getting root bound and that root just spiraling and spiraling. But what I've been thinking is actually do seeds like being a little bit crowded when they are germinating and growing on to, into seedlings? Do they like having a little bit of company when they are at that stage? Because I have been feeling that the Portuguese cabbage and the lettuce have just been growing rather slowly. Well, the good thing is I keep relatively good notes. So I've been able to look back at when I sowed these Portuguese cabbage. Haven't checked the lettuce yet, but I've got a feeling they were in, within a couple of days of each other. But the Portuguese cabbage, I only sowed those on the 7th of August. And they germinated four days later on the 11th of August. It is now the 14th of August. So effectively, that's only like five weeks. You know, that's, that's not a long period of time, five, five and a half weeks. And when I've looked back at my notes for when we have sown Portuguese cabbage in the past, in seed trays, pricked them out, into individual modules or pots and then potted them out I've actually noticed that the period of time is about two months not just five weeks so actually my thought that the Portuguese cabbage have been growing slowly and potentially the lettuce have been growing slowly as well is not correct I've got a feeling that there may be a highly scientific experiment coming on at some point next year, I think, when we sow some Portuguese cabbage and some lettuce as both seed tray sown and germinated and grown on into seedlings and direct sown into modules and grown on to seedlings. So I think we'll be doing that next year. I shall make a note of that. But you know what? This is why note taking is so valuable for us gardeners, because sometimes we can think, gosh, that's taking a really long time to, to do this. Or hasn't that done really quickly this time, you know, germinated really quickly. But if we've got notes that we can look back on to when we've done similar things before, we can have a true comparison. And during my conversation with Vivi this morning, we were talking about this and, and Vivi and I have both read that maybe seedlings, certain seedlings like a bit of companionship in their early stages, in that germination and that, that early seedling stage. Both of us have read that. I think Vivi more um, remembers more about it than I have. I think I've I've done a passing read of it where she's read into it in in further detail. But yeah, it's it's really interesting. So you know, I've been looking at those Portuguese cabbage almost daily, thinking why aren't they growing quicker? I'm sure they should be twice the size, but no, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I think it just goes to show how long a month can feel like. I mean, to think I only sowed those on the 7th of August 
and five weeks later and for the last two weeks actually I've been thinking are they growing really slowly you know and I was wrong keeping notes certainly does help sometimes so I'm going to leave it there today I did a big stream on Sunday of the whole area the whole plot but you know what I'm going to cough <coughs> oh excuse me the grass is growing so quickly it really needs a strim again which is I mean you know we've had lots of rain and now we've got pretty decent daytime temperatures I mean it, it knocked 25 degrees the other day I think at the moment it says it's 22 and a half degrees outside so yeah you know opportunity for grass and weeds to really grow and I can tell you on this plot the grass and weeds are taking that opportunity to grow and actually so are the Portuguese cabbage as well right I'm going to leave this segment there and I will see you again pretty soon bye good day as you can most probably tell it's a gorgeous day down here gorgeous afternoon it's Friday afternoon I can hear a train going along having left the local Hamwell station in one direction and I can hear helicopter in the opposite direction but actually everything down here is just lovely apart from the weeds and the grass which are growing better than anything else I brought my battery down so that I can do some strimming there's a lot of work to do down here the nights are beginning to get quite cool now and I think the ripening of the tomatoes will take an awful lot longer and I think I will be picking quite a few green and then taking them home to ripen and if they don't ripen it will be green tomato curry time which is fine I had been getting a little bit concerned about our butternut squash as well which you can just see down there on the right because they hadn't been changing colour and I was concerned that they were not going to get to maturity but the first one that formed I've seen today that it's changing to its sort of dull orange colour which is great and if I look at many of the larger ones that are on those plants they're beginning to change colour so hopefully with some really good days like this those butternut squash will be able to ripen up and be fabulous for storing um, yeah so what am I going to do I don't think I'm going to do a huge amount I have noticed a few beans where we took the beans out over on the left of those runner beans that you can see I've noticed a few beans have germinated so I'm just going to be hoeing those down they can rot down into the soil that's from beans that fell from pods it's not late germination of seeds we sowed it's um, it's just germination from seeds that fell onto the ground maybe during uh, the harvest that I did I think oh now I can see a dragonfly you can't see it it's over our um, plot neighbors just to my left um, oh no did it come in I think it might have just come into the top left hand corner then it's um, here's a butterfly no it's that voided a camera there's another butterfly oh look can you see up here is it up there oh I don't know if you can see the dragonfly going backwards and forwards anyway yeah I mean oh it's such a lovely day I'm sitting here with long sleeve t-shirt and a short sleeve t-shirt long sleeve t-shirt rolled up as well and yeah I'm really really toasty so I'm going to get on and do a few jobs not yes yeah, trimming 
so le, le, yeah yeah i can't speak now um i just seen three swans in another direction as well it's obviously oh and i saw a woodpecker i was down here earlier um i had to be down for something just for five ten minutes and i saw a woodpecker in one of our sycamore trees and that was like wow oh, i just get too excited <laughs> Yeah, so before I get more excited, I'm just going to do some strimming. As I was doing my strimming, I noticed a lot of weeds had germinated in the side beds here. But I'd also seen here some sankfoil, and there's some sankfoil here as well. So what I'm going to do is get my hand fork and take the bits of sankfoil that I can see out, and then I'm just going to give everything else a hoe to chop those weeds down this weather is just perfect you know wet weather sun and the weeds they do grow I took a pair of gloves home to wash and you can see I took a size 6 and a size 7 so I've got two right hand gloves here just see how much we can get out. Look at that. So there's more down there. Oh. There's a huge bit there. about this one that one's smaller but for this one I'm going to actually get my big fork maybe you can't see it but that's it there huge root let's get my big fork oh where have I put the oh that was silly there's that bit oh no I got the two bits get my big fork Uh, bum. Well, at least I got some more out. Hopefully that won't come up this year. But it's all back. So that's just had a quick hoe and I've taken out that big root and those two bits of sank for all there. That was a job I hadn't expected to do today, though when I was strimming and I saw the weeds germinating in those end beds, yeah, get on and hoe. There's plenty of other weeds here and I'll deal with those over the coming days, or some of them. This will never be a weed-free plot. 
particularly of sank foil. Um, I reckon that with the weather that we've got at the moment, as I said, some of those weeds that we've hoed down will still take hold and still root. So in four or five days, I will be hoeing those end beds again to try and keep on top of them. Because we're unlikely to be moving house until July, um, with the house going on the market in the early, early in the new year, I'm thinking about what we may put in over the winter months, like broad beans, like some types of pea, possibly meteor, um, and where, where they might go. I know where the turnips are going to go, and I'm wondering whether I do do peas in the end beds here, like I did with Moj 2 earlier this growing year. I don't know. We will we will see. If I decide not to use those end beds, I will cover them in cardboard because I certainly don't want weeds to take hold over the winter months if the bed is going to be left empty. So, yeah, there we are. Anyway, I'm going to go now. I will see you sometime over the weekend. I'm not quite sure when. And I think we may be doing a little bit of rather late seed sowing of something. We'll see. We'll see. What I will do is look at these runner beans that we harvested a week or so ago because they are ready to be podded. So it'll be interesting to see whether they are black seeds inside, whether they're the normal Scarlet Emperor, sort of mauvey, purpley and black or whether they're something completely different anyway see you very soon bye there's a fly in here now it's just gone out bye good day it's a bit of out with the old and in with the new today i'm going to be taking these lettuce out which are mainly going to seed now and a little bit bitter and putting our lettuce seedlings into their place even though the seedlings are pretty small because I've noticed that the seedlings do actually have pretty decent roots so let's have a quick look at those. These are the seedlings that we're going to be putting in. Still a bit small but if I lift them up you can see they've all got pretty decent roots and the roots are all coming out the bottom anyway. So yeah, I'm going to put these in and the others that we're taking out will go into the compost bin. These are now in. Hopefully you can just about see them. You can see how small the plants are by the fact that you can just about see them. That green one there is a Mizuna, so I've left it in. And at the back, I've left in a coriander that is still doing fine. And this pile of compost here is the compost from the modules where the lettuce got eaten by a slug or snail. So I've just popped that there and I'll break that up in a moment. But now, as per usual, these are going to have a really good water. I've always loved the view from the back of the polytunnel and the other day when I was coming down I found this chair with please take outside someone's front gate so took it I did and you know what it's the perfect seat for in here yeah really pleased I'm wearing sunglasses because it is so, so sunny. And the way that the polytunnel um, is laid out, 
at the moment the sun is up there straight through the door and I'm just loving the view so I'm so pleased to have this chair I really am when I see the neighbours because I do know them when I do see them um, I will thank them and say it's in the poly and being very much enjoyed I'm really pleased to have got these lettuce in they are small I appreciate that I would have liked them to have been at least two or three times larger before I put them in but I sort of feel as though we're getting into autumn now um, I mean I really feel as though we're in autumn now we hit meteorological autumn as I said two weeks ago just over two weeks ago we've got astronomical autumn on the 23rd so you know those nights they're they're getting longer the days are getting shorter and even though we have glorious sun today and much of this week in the afternoon at night it's getting really chilly so I want these to be in this bed so that their roots can develop before the really cold nights come on I don't and um, we won't be harvesting these over the winter months um, or oh, I doubt we will be They're They're more for spring, but we'll see how it goes. If we have a mild winter, who knows? They are a winter variety, marvel of four seasons. So you can grow them in all four seasons, though, particularly suitable for colder, the colder months of the year. And we will see how they do. I moved a few snails um, when I was doing the clearing. However, there were three frogs here as well. So I'm hoping that they're going to keep any slugs at bay and any smaller snails and snail eggs. But, you know, if they get eaten by snails or slugs, then so be it. it I'm not wishing it, of course, but it seems to be that type of year this year. But yeah, let's hope that they, they survive and they grow on. I will be keeping an eye on their... Um, how moist they are to make sure they do not dry out because I certainly don't want them to dry out or not have enough water in the coming month to six weeks. Once those roots are established and the plant is growing well I might cut back on the watering a little but I will see how it goes. Anyway I'm quite happy with what I've got done this week this sun is going to make that grass grow that I trimmed yesterday. Of course, I've noticed a few areas that I, I missed, so I may do those tomorrow. And I think tomorrow is going to be a day off for me. So I'm going to leave this week's A Week at the Plot here. And I will see you on Monday when this gets uploaded on YouTube. Or I'll see you throughout the week next week on Planet Vegetaria with the segments that I do and the, the, I think the first segment is going to be planting out those turnips that are growing in the modules in fact that's a reminder I now need to go and water because the plants that we have got growing in modules without trays or even modules with trays with holes in they really do need a water. In fact, I'm going to swap out one of the trays where we don't have holes. No, where we do have holes for a tray where we don't have holes, because that's going to be better as we go forward. Anyway, you've seen me do that before and talk about that before. Right. I'm just going to sit here now and look out the door and just take in what I think is a rather lovely view for about five minutes and then I'm just going to potter and do a few other things. See you very soon. If you have any comments or questions please do put them down below obviously. See you very soon. Bye.